What up guys, Alex here again. Um, just as you saw the other day, I posted a video up on the, uh, the wide body uh, BBK being finished, the 14 inch 370Z rotors with the CTSV six pot fronts and four pot rears. So now that the car is done, I'm gonna go, go ahead and start working on my next project. And it's actually beginning to be up there in the corner, which is my Xterra. So it's up there in the rack because I don't drive it during the winter. Um, it's freezing cold, like right now outside, it's, it's roughly 34 degrees. But, uh, so the Xterra, if you didn't know, it's turbocharged. It's a VG33. I did have it uh, fully rebuilt with uh, VG33 ER pistons, which is the lower compression. Uh, I believe those are to be 8.3 to 1. Um, so it's turbocharged with a universal cheapo eBay T3, T4 turbo. Um, went ahead and thought, hey, you know what? Uh, I can do a lot more with this Xterra, knowing that I have a lot of knowledge with the VG33. Um, so my plan is is to go to a uh, supercharged and turbocharged setup on there, and that's called a twin charge setup. Um, some manufacturers like Volvo uh, does it from the factory. I know Volkswagen does it like, like on the R32 in Europe, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. And then there's like, uh, I think Mercedes, I think some of their uh, freight trucks do that as well. So it is a thing. It just all comes down to tuning and how you do it. And the reason why you might be asking is like, hey, why are you you know, going to a weird supercharged and, and turbocharged setup when you can just get a bigger turbo. And you're absolutely right, I could. It's really easy just to slap on a bigger turbo. But, if, you know, if there's something you don't know about me already is I like to do things differently and uh, be unique. And the example is obviously the wide body having a VK56 versus your traditional LS V8 swap. So, at once upon a time, I actually did do a twin charge setup on the Xterra. And I'll show you some pictures of it. Um, it did work a little well ish not really um it was the uh, factory m62 the eaton m62 supercharger bolted it on and let me show you some pictures of it real quick um so there it is uh sorry for just kind of showcasing this this style but the supercharger you know it got configured you can see the turbo sitting there um had the belts uh configured that way i uh, found a pulley that was the same rib count and mounted on the uh the factory bracket there in replacement of the AC. Normally the belt uh, configuration goes around like that and then the AC compressor sits over here, but obviously with the turbo there, that wasn't gonna happen. So I put this other pulley here and that allows me to tension it like a factory setup would be. So it, it ran and here's a little video. Um, I don't know if I can turn the audio on or not. I don't think it's playing that well, uh, but it, it ran, it ran okay. A couple times I was able to hit the uh, the 14 pounds of boost that was calculated. Uh, and so how that works is on the wastegate spring pressure for the turbo I have in the car now, it's a 7 PSI wastegate spring pressure. Uh, the supercharger natively, naturally hits 7 PSI from the factory as well. So I should, in theory, see 14. And in fact, I did. Uh, the problem with the setup is I was unable to tune for it. Um, unable to get the proper boost curve and the fuel I needed because I was still running and I still still am running it today the factory supercharged ECU and factory supercharged injectors. Um, let's see if I can get some audio. Let's play that again real quick. But the uh, there we go. So you can hear it running. And I blip the throttle for a second. So I know you can't hear it too well in the audio, you know, video or video here but you could hear the spool of the uh, turbo plus a spool of the, or the whine of the supercharger. But anyways, going back to the complications I had was that it didn't run well because I couldn't tune for it. Um, so that's why I went back and pulled off the supercharger thinking I'll do this again later on once I put like mega squirt or micro squirt in the vehicle. Low priority for such a, you know, chopped up, low budget, low dollar build Xterra up there. But now I'm ready for the next step and its performance. Um, so the transmission, and if you want to talk about that real quick, it is a 38 transmission, just like you'd find in a Z31, actually closer matching a Z32, since it has the uh, upgraded synchros as the Z3298 spec would have. So for all intents and purposes, it is a pretty built transmission, being the five-speed 30A. Uh, it is a four-wheel drive. It does have a transfer case on it. The transfer case is driven by a chain. I'm not really worried about that. Most of the driving I do is in two-wheel drive anyways. Only a few occasions have I gone off-roading to what I actually need the four-wheel drive. I didn't build the thing to go off-roading, really. I just built it to have a fun little dune buggy I can haul around the family in replacement of like having a four-seater Z car. When you drive the Xterra, especially now that's turbocharged, it really feels 
like a Z31 turbo. Hits seven pounds of boost, just like the factory T3 did back in the day. It's a little faster because the turbo's a T3, T4, so it hits a little harder, but man, it really feels like a Z31 turbo. The few people that I've let drive it, they like, yeah, it definitely feels like a, a Z31. Even the shifter feels like a Z31. So now that I'm getting ready to upgrade it, one might ask, what am I doing? What am I doing differently? Well, let's cruise over here, walk over here, and I'll show you. So here is the traditional M62 supercharger that I had on the vehicle, kind of got it mocked up here. Here is an M122 supercharger. Now, kind of like how Garrett does its T series turbos, like the 88, 89 turbos were a T25, slightly smaller turbo than a T3. A T25, think of it as like a 2.5, so T.2.5. But like even the Z32s, they had a T28 and also a T25 based on, you know, whether it was an automatic or manual. But uh, so kind of similar how Eaton does it. An M62 is a, you know, it's a characteristic of sizing that they do. I don't know exactly what the M62 really stands for. I haven't really read too much into it. There is a smaller version of the uh, M series. I think it's like M40, uh, M49 or M45. I can't remember. And then there's the M90, which is pretty common in a lot of other applications. Like the most popular one's probably the Pontiac Grand Prix. Those have an M90 supercharger, a little bit bigger than that guy. Uh, and then there's an M112 that's in some of the Mustangs. And I think the, uh, uh, the Ford Lightning trucks have those too. And then, you know, the M112, or I'm sorry, the M122, what you see here is out of a uh, Ford Mustang, the GT500. So this is the largest M series you can get. Uh, if you want to go bigger, you have to go to a Whipple or a TVS series supercharger. Again, I'm still learning superchargers. I'm not all that familiar with how they all work and operate, but I know enough to want to do this project and have some fun with it. So uh, one thing to note here, as you can see, I specifically chose the GT500 M1, M122 because of the outlet, or I guess the inlet, if you will. It's on the same characteristic as the uh, M62. So that'll make uh, routing and piping and clearancing a whole lot easier since it's already kind of in the natural position or not natural but the uh, factory position there so that's the idea and let's take a look on the inside real quick of how this is going to look i just got things kind of mocked up here as i was figuring out the pulley alignment is there another bolt i think that might be it let me just make sure i don't have any other ones all right so let's pull it off one more yeah, yeah there's one more my bad so let's get that last bolt back here like i said things are just mocked up loosely all right so if you look on the uh the back side of the supercharger you can kind of look at the sizing here based on the the cavity or the i guess the girth if you will of the of the rotors there so so basically from like right here to right about here-ish is the size of the rotors. And as I twist, they, you know, they compress air and do their supercharging, you know, dealio. But if you to put in comparison of the M122, flip this over by, by hand here. Look how much bigger this thing is. So its body, I guess its rotor body is from here to right about here. It is a massive here, massive supercharger. But if you, you know, otherwise look, you got the snout, the pulleys essentially in the same positioning. You got your bypass valve in the back, basically in the same positioning there. So it's gonna make adapting to, you know, the Xterra or the V233 a whole lot easier. So if you look here, and let me share some of my plans here. This is the VG33, uh, adapter or the supercharger adapter plate, the lower plate that you use to essentially bolt onto the, you know, the lower intake manifold that we're all used to in the VG world. Um, so with this setup, you know, you got this custom, you know, Eaton specific M62 specific configuration here that only allows this one supercharger to bolt onto it. Look at the pattern differences between the M62 and the Ford's M122. It's massively different, but I have a plan and let me show you how it's going to work out. So I use this bench here to position things accordingly. So uh, I got this other supercharger, a uh, supercharged lower intake manifold with the adapter plate. And obviously what you can tell so far is I have cut off all of the mounting plates on, or the tabs on the sides. 
um, cut off the front one. I went ahead and left these two back there because they're not going to be in the way. Might as well just leave them. And what, what I'm going to do, and here's a cardboard template that I made. Oops, I got it backwards. So this is how I've basically configured and determined the best place to uh, position the supercharger and have it kind of fit in a factory uh, manner. Have the pulley alignment be perfect, et cetera, et cetera. But as you can tell, you know, first off, the bolt pattern's way different. And you can tell that some, there's some voids here that I'll need to concern myself about. So my plan is, and I've already started on it, and I had to take a break. My plan is to use very thick aluminum bar stock. This is a half inch or maybe three eighths. This is three eighths, not half inch, I'm sorry. Three eighths, which, if you come over here and look at the tabs that I've cut off, like this guy right here, it's the same thickness, three eighths. I wanna use the same thickness when I bolt things down that the, uh, you know, the bolt clamping force and thread, thread engagements can be the same. So what I've basically done is I've got the template and I need to essentially get the aluminum cut out to where I'm gonna weld or TIG weld the, uh, the, you know, what you see here, the wing here, if you will, and have it be a part of the intake. So essentially the, in, the uh, supercharger will just bolt straight on. I don't have to do modifications to the supercharger. So here's an example of a very large piece that I've already cut out with a bandsaw. And you know, it takes a lot of practice or you know, patience to do this. But if you can see here, check that out. A couple small voids right there, nothing I can't fill in with my TIG. But that's gonna accommodate the ability to bolt on the supercharger. And I'm gonna do that all the way around as I will. And when I come back to this area back here in the corner, I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do this yet, but essentially uh, what I'll do is right back here, I think I'll need to add material on the inside so that way I can seal off. So I think there's only a couple parts where I need to add material on the inside. It's back here and it's this stretch right here that I need to add material on the inside. And that'll essentially be it. So that's my plan to get the uh, supercharger built on. Um, but yeah, uh, fuel pump is going to be a, uh, the Walbro uh, 450 LPH pump. I can't decide if I just want to just run the uh, like, like a thousand cc injectors or even just go up to like the 2200 cc like the Bosch 210s. The Bosch 210s are huge, but so extremely cost effective. It's like, why not? You know, you're already spending that much money on injectors. Let's just get it big. So I already have custom fuel rails that I made for this guy. Um, you know, they're built fuel rails that go across. I'm, I'm able to make fuel rails now, so no need to rely on some other company or party to do that. And as far as the ECU, I think what I'll do is go to Mega Squirt. I can make a Squirt 3, the gold box, and just have a, a custom harness set up and replicate the Z31, um, how Z31 guys use Mega Squirt. So that means I'll have to use a Z31 distributor in, in replacement of the uh, VG33 distributor. But otherwise, you know, it's just business as usual with the ability to tune and make adjustments as I need to. Uh, the block was rebuilt with new pistons, as I said. The block can, you know, normally support about 500 horsepower. I'm not going to hit that point, to be honest with you, although I probably can. That's not my goals. I want to hit around like 400 horsepower and have it just be a solid, reliable 400 horsepower Xterra. Um, the only concern actually that I have right now is the clutch ability to hold. I put a spec stage three plus clutch. I think those clutches are rated for, I think about 600 and some foot pounds of torque. So it should be able to hold just fine. But that's my only worry is like, Hey, do I need to get another clutch? I really don't want to, but otherwise it should hold up fine. You know, just, you know, numbers on paper here, but yeah, guys, I mean, that's it so far. Pretty excited to just tinker around and make something work just because at this point it's winter and I'm kind of bored. And, uh, but yeah, it should be a fun project. I'm really hoping to kind of showcase some of my ability to adapt and make things just work with what you got in your hands or out in your shed or shop or whatever. So anyhow, should be a fun project. I'll keep the, uh, keep the cameras rolling as always. Uh, the next video I'll make was, you know, I'll, I'm sure I'll make a video showing how everything's been ticked up, welded, and the ability to, you know, bolt on an M122 supercharger. But after that, you know, it's going to be accumulation of parts, injectors, pump, and, uh, you know, obviously Megasword's going to be the biggest, the biggest purchase there. But should be fun. Should be a fun project. And hopefully I can make it reliable and just be something unique out there on the road. You know, a twin-charged compound setup. And if to kind of answer any questions right off the bat, 
yes, it's been done. Uh, the Pontiac guys in the Grand Prix, they do take the, M the uh, M90 and they do turbocharge. I think I saw like a, an old setup where a guy used like a Turbonetics, like a T60 size turbo. And he was making some like 400, 500 horsepower out of a front wheel drive Pontiac, which is crazy. But it's definitely something possible and people has been doing it for a while. I just got to figure out how to get the turbo plumbed in. I think one of the requirements is to delete the uh, bypass valve. So there's no restriction there because you need to have the turbo not be met with any restriction during idle and boost. So it should, it should work. I have to just kind of figure out the bypass valve. But if you guys know what I should do with the bypass valve, just let me know. That's kind of where I'm stuck right now in my research. But otherwise, this should be a fun project, guys. Uh, the shop's kind of maintaining a status quo right now. Not much going on other than keeping it clean. But, but anyways, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up below. If you have any suggestions of how to get rid of that bypass valve or use it or whatever, let me know. And uh, as always, like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.